Now, before you go and get all self-righteous and criticize dear Mrs. Lovett for her deal with the so-called demon barber of Fleet Street, don't forget that restaurants have always been a tough business to make a dime. If you can get yourself an edge, you say maybe even a clear-cut advantage over the competition, you take it. Ethical questions, divine commandments, be damned. So you can't blame the restaurateur, played with great panache by Livia Janice for her giddiness in having found a free and seemingly endless source of unusually fresh two-legged game for her meat pies, particularly since the previous nearly inedible product wasn't all that popular with the populace. Now that's the premise, of course, of Sweeney Todd, the terrific and marvelously macabre Stephen Sondheim musical produced by the Camelot Theatre Company. It's the first play in the new theatre in talent, and one that shows off the professional quality of the space, and particularly the warm and auditorium-swelling acoustics. The plot has Todd returning to London after 15 years of false imprisonment. He'd been put away by Judge Turpin, Bob Minor, who coveted Todd's wife Lucy, who'd been driven to suicide. Infuriated to find that his daughter Johanna, Kendra Taylor, has become the judge's ward, Todd is bent on vengeance. While Don Matthews' portrayal of the barber butcher, Todd, is necessarily big and bold, what elevates his performance and the show itself, is his capacity to mine the nuances of a surprisingly sympathetic character, one who's far more than merely malevolent. He and Janice are perfectly paired. Playing his partner in this problematic procurement, she makes sure the audience is fully marinated in her mouth-watering manic merriment. Both of them, along with the entirety of the company, manage to master the vocal intricacies of a typically complex and challenging Sondheim score. Credit goes to director Gwen Overland and musical director Mark Reppert for maintaining discipline and integrity of the ensemble. Overland's attention to detail, by the way, is meticulous and the source of so much of the magic. Priscilla Quinby is the beggar woman and Bob Minor in the role of the elegantly evil Judge Turpin were particular standouts. But perhaps the most impactful and convincing singular performance was that of the entire Greek chorus of citizens that provides narration and bone-chilling commentary in a minor key. The ensemble work is well-synchronized and razor-sharp. Their faces, niftily shadowed by a spot-on lighting scheme by Bart Grady, appear frozen with the fulsomeness of the crime. As much fun as this black comedy is, the chorus doesn't allow you to forget that the subject is, well, serial murders. My sole complaint is one I have to take up not with the company, but with Hugh Wheeler, who wrote the script and front-loaded the first act with plot exposition. His book doesn't become a true page-turner until the rousing and hilarious last song of the act, A Little Priest, where the chief cook and body washer, Mrs. Lovett, and co-conspirator Sweeney crow about the various new cuts of meat Todd is likely to provide. Try the priest, sings Mrs. Lovett. Heavenly, Todd replies. Not as hardy as bishop, perhaps, but then again, not as bland as curate, either. And good for business, too, sings Mrs. Lovett, and always leave you wanting more. Trouble is, we only get it on Sundays. From that song on, until the final curtain, the ride is hair-raising, breathtaking, and all downhill. No matter how you slice it, this Camelot Theatre Company production of Sweeney Todd is bound to make you salivate for more. You can see it in talent through July 24th. I rate Sweeney Todd four and a half rosies.